Welcome back to another episode of Dungeon Hammer, brought to you by One Mind Syndicate. I am your host, Gershwan, and I'm here with my two co-hosts. That's our creature. And the sound alchemist. And today we're going to be talking about how to run a mystery campaign in Dungeons and Dragons 5e. So, how do you guys do it? <laughs> well, first of all, you have to 100% know what mystery in- entails. Yeah. So for a campaign to be considered mystery, you have to have some type of plot that is unknown to the party. Obviously, you yourself, it, it, I think it works best if you as the DM know everything. Like you pre-plan this, you make it... Um, At least the main hook. Yeah, I wouldn't say you want to railroad it, but just kind of have the main gist, like the beginning and the end of this mystery campaign uh, in concrete, like... 100%. This is the mystery. This is how they're going to solve it. But it's Somewhere. very... Yeah, so like the best way to uh, think, of, think of it is it's very vid- video gamey. Where yes. like you know what the last scene is going to be. Like, well, at least the producers of it, is it, they know. It might be an open world, but at the end of the day, they know that like who's going to be at the very end of the... Mm-hmm. Or, what scene is going to play out. It's a lot different from preparing for a mystery arc is a lot different than your normal D&D because like you said you have to know all the clues. You yeah. don't necessarily have to know exactly what happens, but you have to plan out all the all the information you're going to give to your players and place them in places or have a a vague idea where they're going to get these clues to le- eventually lead them to the answer or the whatever. Yeah. There's a lot of different ways to do mystery. Mhm. Murder mystery, um, help me out here. Uh, <laughs> other kind of mysteries, uh, like who who done it type thing, like a, mm-hmm. like a robbery or who's poisoning the well or yeah. stuff like that. Um, it's funny because nobody helped you out. Nobody. I was because well, like I was trying to think like wait what other mysteries are there? Um, but when I think of a mystery, I definitely think like the Scooby Doo mysteries, where like you are trying to figure out. There's a so there's a cause and you're trying to find the eff- no sorry there's an there's effect. effect and you're trying to figure out the cause of that effect mm-hmm. yes. and that cause can be somebody with a bloody hand it could be um something completely different um but the, but the point is like the the mystery is the the cause i think yeah and then when you look at um yeah i'm still trying to brainstorm like or trying to like think like what other mysteries would there be um, <clears throat> I guess you could have like the mystery of uh, like a magical item. What are its origins? Yeah. Mm. Where did it come yeah. from? Yeah. Where will it go? Cotton Eye Joe. That's not how it goes, is it? That's pretty much how it goes. I think. <laughs> um. So then, when you guys are creating a mystery, would you guys ever do it for a full campaign, or is this just a one uh, one shot thing? Yeah, it's got to be like maybe two three sessions max i i don't necessarily mean it has to be i mean that short but i think it should be an arc i don't think it should be the whole campaign and i tend to like mystery for lower level play Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. magic Mm -hmm. can kind of put a hindrance on your mystery there's a lot of magic that kind of just completely overcomes obstacles Mm -hmm. that you might not have thought of so as zone a DM, of truth. Yeah, zone of truth, <laughs> speak with dead, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like they just instantly kind of mm-hmm. But as a DM you should either go at lower levels where that magic isn't available or think about that stuff and think about reasons why that magic might not overcome the the obstacles. Mm-hmm. For example, if someone if there's a dead body, a murder mystery, Claire comes up and says, Speak with dead, who killed you? Maybe the person that got killed didn't see who killed them, or they were poisoned. They don't, they don't know. Yeah, they don't. Who they don't. What. They don't have to have all the answers. <clears throat> um, so. Yeah, I, I do agree. I think if you are a DM and you're going to run a higher level mystery c- uh, campaign, you need to know exactly what spells there are out there. But um, but that doesn't mean that you can't have it because, like what Definitely, you were saying, yeah. like you could always just say, "Okay, I zone of truth." Well, the guy doesn't have to answer. He could just kill himself. He has like a cyanide pill in his uh, yeah. molar or something, yeah. and or he doesn't well, know, or or what he believes to be true isn't actually the truth. Mm-hmm. Maybe he was fed wrong information or stuff, stuff like that. 
it just, if you're going to do it at higher levels, you just have to be aware, and it kind of requires more prep from the DM yeah, to kind of yeah. get around these obstacles. Or maybe just don't do that. Let your players shine. Mm-hmm. Let your cleric go up and just completely leap over five obstacles. Maybe not get to the very end of the mystery, but like, whoa, we're so glad that we had this cleric here because they just helped us get 100%. past all this hard stuff. Yeah. I think it is important, though, if you are a DM and that does happen to you and you want to let your character shine, let them know. Like, hey, I mean, not explicitly, like, say, hey, you jumped over five clues, but, like, show them somehow, like, you would have been able to find out this small bit of information by going here, here, and here. But you, because you're so awesome, you just skipped all of of those. Mm -hmm. But be be, uh, clever in the way that you say it. Yeah. Either... Yeah, it'd be harder to do it. And another thing, too, just based on uh, experience uh, with other people is that making a mystery campaign longer than a couple sessions, like the Sound Alchemist said, it really kills the uh, anticipation. So it becomes like, this isn't really a mystery campaign anymore. It's just like, you just don't want to tell us exactly (laughs) who the guy Mm -hmm. is because you're holding off on it. Right. Uh, So, yeah, I I would definitely say that. The best mystery scenarios I've experienced are one or two sessions, and then you figure it out who it is, who it is, and you feel uh, you get that instant gratification. Now, finding out who it is or figuring out the mystery, do you feel like you have more gratification if it's a team member, like a party member, or was it, would it be like a? It's better put like an NPC. Uh, I think if it's a one shot, then having a player at the table be the bad guy or the perp, perp mm-hmm. um, could be cool but I think a long standing campaign it'd be kind of weird right like if you've a higher level and you've been with this person for so long and all of a sudden he'll turn they're a bad guy um, I don't think like for example we did a murder mystery and we're playing a long time campaign and let's say your characters the DM pulls you aside you're going to be the murderer blah 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 or whatever I don't think the characters would be like, oh, man, we got to put him in jail now. They'd be like, yo, so why'd you kill this guy? Mm-hmm. Oh, most likely they're going to be like, okay, we'll just forget this ever happened. Let's get out of here before they figure out it was you. Because if if your players have a good relationship or your characters have a good relationship, they're going to kind of come to bat for you and yeah. give you the benefit of the doubt or depending on what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, or if you're that evil, they might just be like, you did this real bad thing, but... You've done good stuff in the past, so we're just going to look the other way. Maybe they'll kick your character out of the party or whatever, but it might not be as, like, hardcore. Like, they won't they won't go after you as hard once they find out that it's yeah. you. So I think it'd be better to be an NPC. Long-winded yeah. way of saying that. <clears throat> there is a benefit, though, if you... So, uh, something that you can take away as a, as a DM, if you are approached by a player who says, like, hey, like, I'm tired of playing this character. I want to, like, switch out. You instead of just saying like, oh, one day you get a call from your family, you gotta leave, <laughs> but actually creating a two session story where like it turns out that that player who wants to stop playing that character is the murderer, and like the the law has to put him in jail and getting rid of him that way. I think that's a that's that's like an opportunity for you to be like, oh, cool, I'm gonna run this mystery campaign. Yeah, and that really kind of puts your characters' alignments on check. Yeah. Because if you are like a chaotic, lawful, or a lawful good character, it's like, yeah, we've been traveling with you for such a long time, but you broke the law, these are the rules, then Mm -hmm. it's like, you got to do that. Especially your own rules, yeah. Mm -hmm. And definitely check out the podcast that we did last week about character alignment, or like two weeks ago. Uh, Yeah, definitely check that out. But anyway, going back into this mystery campaign, how do you feel about the mystery having too many clues not enough clues like what's what's the good sweet spot for oh right right how many clues should you lay out before yeah because like like it? you were saying earlier it's like okay this has been like session seven and we're not getting anywhere near <laughs> yeah yeah like, that'd be yeah. miserable um i think you should the clues from the beginning to the end should kind of narrow your search mm-hmm. so the first clue that you find should kind of Narrow down. Okay, this we know. We now know that this is the person from inside the town that's doing this, from this first clue. Then the second clue you get. Okay, it's no one of the nobility because 
we found a super fancy scarf with blood on it or whatever. And then you narrow it down even more. Okay, it's uh, one of the no- noble politicians that has money in this company or whatever. And just keep narrowing down the clues from there. But I think each clue, should you should have multiple ways of getting that information. Mm-hmm. So if you have a check go wrong, you're not like, oh, crap, well, they didn't pass that check. There's no way for them to get this information anymore. <laughs> yeah. So what happens? They just never figure out the mystery, and they just kind of flounder around for a bit, and you got to kind of figure out how to get them back on track. Flounder yeah. around? <laughs> yeah. I like yeah, that. Yeah, I got caught up on that <laughs> word, too. I don't know why, but I was just picturing, picturing like a fish flopping on the floor. Like a flounder flopping around. Yeah, I got a good why imagination. Why is he flopping there. around? Because he's out he's of water. Helpless. He doesn't know what to do. Who put him there? Oh, that's a mystery. Oh. Um, let's figure it out. What are the clues? He's a fish. He belongs in the water. <laughs> He's not in the water. How far away? Oh, whatever. Wah, wah, wee, wah. Um, <laughs> that's a good point, though, because it is it is a matter of, like, creating clues or or in a way, like, you you shouldn't create the clue. You should create the solution and then have multiple ways for you, for the party to get that message, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow. Because then you just don't want to trap yourself, so that you have to you have to either break the immersion or do something that is going to obviously be like, okay, guys, this is the information mm-hmm. in a way that kind of just comes out of nowhere, and they're like, we didn't have to work for that clue. What happened? Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's because we failed that check, and he wasn't prepared to yeah. deal with that kind of thing. That's when the whole theater of mind versus actual gameplay or actual board state comes into huge like consideration because if you're just describing things you could essentially hiccup and overly describe something it's like oh you walk into a room you see a chest you see the beds not made and you see a broken window with glass everywhere and there's blood all over the place it's like you kind of just gave yourself like why would they check the drawer or the bed well well, that can be a good red herring as well that's true maybe they go straight to the thing that's most obvious and they miss something else um but then the opposite is true. Yeah. Where if like you're putting... But they should get some information from that then. That's true, yeah. Not completely nothing. Um, maybe you have multiple clues of varying degrees of difficulty in mm-hmm. the same place. Maybe instead of... There's a clue that narrows it down a little bit and then a clue that narrows it down a lot, but you got to roll really high in order to get this really good clue. Uh, and also kind of make sure that everybody in the party can... Are, uh, can participate regardless of what class they are because certain classes are going to really shine in a mystery campaign right rogues mm. wizards Rose. clerics but the fighter and the barbarian maybe the paladin might kind of be there scratching their head because they, they're not smart they don't know how to look at things <laughs> but the paladin can just be like hey oh god what happened true <laughs> um but just make sure there there are obstacles that are going to play to their strengths as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Strength puzzles, uh, maybe a history check about some sort of military thing that the fighter might know about if they're like a soldier or anything like that. Or maybe you're getting too close to like the actual perpetrator and he sends his goons after you or something. Yeah, you got to have a little little scuffle. Because when I think about mystery arcs, there doesn't, in, in my mind, I don't think of a lot of combat happening. So it might be kind of a combat... Um, not very combat rich arc is what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but injecting little combats in there that are kind of clues in themselves. Like uh, you get jumped in a in an alleyway with hooded figures, and after you dispatch them, you find out you rip the hood off, and it's their town's guard. It's like why did we get attacked in the town's guard in the alley? Mm-hmm. That's a clue. Like it's, we're getting too close, or mm-hmm. someone in the town's guard doesn't want us to know this information for whatever reason. Um, use combat to also give your pick your player's information yes. yeah yeah um right now when you were saying that i thought about like uh the whole um what's the role-playing game with cthulhu uh, um call cthulhu yeah the the thing is like if you get into combat in that game okay you're dead yeah um and i think in a mystery making if you if you don't have a combat heavy team or group then making it very like the combat should be something that they should stay away from. It still gives you, it will still give you the clues, but it's a lot harder for you to gain those clues uh, through that means, I guess. 
And if you want a game like that, maybe looking into Call of Cthulhu, because that that's basically a mystery RPG. Yeah. Like the whole thing is that's like whole about thing. mysteries. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to just super lean into that mystery side, maybe look away from D and D and look into other role playing games for kind of if you want a more myster- mysterious approach to your game. Yeah, and we've talked about this before, but like looking at other role playing games. Um, it is really beneficial, um, specifically in, in creating a mystery because it, it, I, I've heard of another, um, role-playing game where like the thing is like, you're trying to, uh, like, let's say you're trying to rob a bank and there are tokens that you get, uh, that are kind of like flashback tokens. So it's like, uh, I need to get past this guard well, you could use one of those flashback tokens and you bribe the guard beforehand. And it's kind of like one of those, like flashback things like oh, i did this before i did mm-hmm. this before yeah so so using other games to create your mystery would be fun because it is a one shot or it is going to be like a couple sessions throwing in like extra bits from different role-playing games would be fun different mechanics yeah. and stuff yeah, yeah. that's cool because that is pretty cool it's like oh i actually know this guy let me talk to him yeah and yeah. you use your tokens for that mm-hmm. um what do you think is the most difficult thing about running a mystery campaign that, that the party doesn't take it seriously I think that's one thing that's like, uh, like you guys are trying to f- solve this. Why? Like the party could just be like, hey, we don't care. Well, that's why you, you have you relics. Think... I don't go fuck about the relics. <laughs> Especially if it's a one shot, it's like, oh, you get to have this magical world ending device. Or yeah, you should you should make the stakes pretty high for the characters. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe an N- NPC that they all care about got kidnapped or yeah. uh, something like that. For kind of like. Give them no choice. Like, they should do this. Otherwise, the world's going to end, like you said, or something that they care about is gone. Maybe mm-hmm. somebody steals all their magic <laughs> items or something like that, and they have to work to get it. Or maybe there's just a back. reward for it. Yeah. So all a this really good reward, yeah. and you get a million dollars or something. Yeah, and then, like, the thing, too, about as a player, if you see your DM trying to throw a mystery at you, don't be a dick, I guess. Yeah. Just don't be like... Yeah, I mean, I get it. The world's going to end, but mm-hmm. I'm just going to go back with my parents. <laughs> um, yeah. And maybe as a DM, if it's a one-shot type situation, let your players know, like, hey, it's going to be a mystery. So they can kind of you make characters that aren't going to be the dumb barbarian that does, has nothing to do. Mm-hmm. They're, mm-hmm. Gonna, they're all going to have a use in this mystery, and they're going to subscribe to, like, all right, this is what we're doing. Instead mm-hmm. of showing up and being like, hey, I don't want to do this. This is stupid. Let's just leave. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, one of the best mystery campaigns that I think uh, I experienced was a mystery campaign where they used an actual player within the group that was out of town. And they used that person as like, you guys got to rescue this person. Yeah. That, that, that was probably because the motivation is there. So finding a motivation for the party and understanding your party uh, is key when you're running a mystery campaign. Mm-hmm. Like, why are you going to care about the the uh, river being poisoned? Like, you have to give a good reason. Yeah, why. make it their make it their hometown, mm-hmm. or just make the reward that much that enticing that they can't say no. Mm-hmm. Lots of different ways you can do it. Yeah, or maybe just have this be like an offshoot to the your normal campaign. You notice your regular campaign, like people are losing drive and motivation in it. Have this be like a one shot to kind of revitalize the team. Make them work together again to solve a mystery. That way, when you go back into your regular sessions, it's like, oh, you know, remember that time we solved this mystery? Or remember when you used your zone of truth and made everything easier for us? That's true, because it is easy for a DM to get into a template and just be like, okay, so I'm going to build a scenario where they do, you know, X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. And then it just becomes like, well, every town is going to be X, Y, and Z. Throwing in a mystery campaign in the middle of it gives you the ability to like brainstorm different yeah or if you're like fighting or if you're like in a very heavy battle centric campaign this could be the break from fighting it's true yep something that i like i like to do similar to that is if there's something big that happens in the world that the characters aren't necessarily a part of or they show up and experience the aftermath and you can easily do this for a mystery campaign as well one one day they sit down on the table, just hand them pre-generated characters, and you're gonna play a one shot that that influences the the campaign that their actual characters are in. So they're kind of invested, but it gives them more information without just talking to their character or having a, a NPC just tell them. tell them. Like they get to experience what happened, and since they're one shot characters and they know that they're not gonna be playing these characters forever, they're 
they're more like sacrifice themselves, do, do mm-hmm. heroic stuff, stuff like that to kind of just like be cool. And then that stuff feeds into the actual campaign and they still get information. Maybe as the you go to NPC and they start telling you what happened, but instead of doing it, that that's when you hand out the character sheets and say, we're actually going to play through it so that I'm not just talking to you right, for you five actually minutes. Live through it. Yeah. Experience it. Yeah, with, and if it's an interesting thing that happens, yeah. then... It would be a fun thing to but play. But that's going to be very railroady, though. Like you almost, kind of already know the yeah, outcome. Yeah, the, there's an established outcome, and there's certain things that have to happen. So, like, if your character makes, like, a decision that goes against that, it's like, how do you mm-hmm. make it work? Unless, because we, in a way, you ran that with us. Because yeah. we were trying to find that orb. So, uh, the our party was tasked in finding an orb that would affect another session that you were running simultaneously yeah. or yep. well you were running retroactively yeah, yeah. um and it, it would be kind of cool to run run it with the same party like you were saying where you give them a, a character sheet that you created and then like uh later on those uh characters that they played become npcs within the, the actual realm yeah because if if i were to run that campaign with the players in that campaign instead of you guys because you aren't the characters that that affected i guess yeah it would have been cool because it's kind of like having an easter egg or like inside information that exactly, like oh yeah. we were the cause of this mm-hmm. and it's not a good thing but our care what our characters don't know that and it's it just feels good to, to know things like about the campaign like a little bit behind the scenes but it's like it just gives your players a little more information a little yeah more investment into the campaign it makes it feel more real yeah where it's not like, oh, we're the only adventurers here. It's like, oh, there's also other people doing other things. At the same time that we are, yep. that is also affecting the world in a huge way. Mm-hmm. Because you gave that orb to somebody who basically made a nuke and blew yeah. up the capital. Yeah. But in the players, my other campaign just saw the capital get blown up and they're like, oh, crap, this is bad. Yeah. I don't feel bad, though, about that I did that, that my character did that. Well, in the in the one shot, you guys thought you were doing a good thing. Right. Right. And yeah. it was kind of framed that way, like, oh, this guy wants this orb. For a good purpose, we're mm-hmm. going to do it for him. And that was the whole point. Like, he was using you guys. Mm-hmm. In a scenario like that, do you think the party would have... The party that saw the orb get uh, blown up or saw the, the destruction of the orb, do you think that they would benefit from knowing the background? They could. I mean, I can. It, you kind of have to trust your players to kind of step back and be like, this is what my new... This character would do with no knowledge of the future and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And you might, if you see your characters kind of, well, let's just not bring this orb and then change the future kind of thing. You'd be like, the DM kind of got to step in. Like, is this what this character would do? (laughs) You have no, no no idea what's going on. Yeah. This makes me think of a completely different topic that we can talk about. And that's like one DM running multiple sessions in one world. That's what I want to do with my world. Mm -hmm. Like I want to have multiple campaigns in the same world that's shaping the world in different ways because that's, like it's going to grow your world in different yeah. spots. Like mm-hmm. I, I would want to do like one shots in a different continent or yeah. different campaigns in different continents that kind of span and create interesting things in the world. Cause just as a world builder, I love building worlds and that's, it just gold. The more characters that play in your world, the more backstories there are, the more cities and just populates your yeah. world. Cause then the mystery of like, Oh, where did this Aztec temple came out of? It, it could already be solved in another yep. one shot. Yeah, yeah. Or the fact that a player came up with an Aztec temple and put it into your world somewhere, that's cool. Like, that was nothing before, and now it's this cool temple. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. <laughs> Mystery. Mystery. Going, that was a little bit of a tangent there. But, a little um, bit, yeah. It makes sense, though. Because I think the thing about mysteries is the anticipation of finding out the answer. Um, and especially in Scooby-Doo... It's like sometimes the guy you think is actually responsible for it turns out to be not the actual main guy. Yeah. Well, I think, and also that's like a... <clears throat> like a trope. A trope, and it, it does become a situation where like it does create a template for you. So like if you are creating a, um, a mystery campaign, it is really easy to fall into that template. And the the creating a something that deviates from that template would be... Real, the real challenge, I guess. So you're saying, like, if, for example, they caught the guy and everything's fine, and then, like, you think, oh, okay, the campaign's over, but then there's another session, and it's like, mm-hmm. another person found out, was found dead, drained of blood. It's like, well, I thought we captured him. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that that's a way to keep the mystery going. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, I think there's a. So at that point, would you stop the campaign because essentially they solved it, but they didn't, or would you keep it going? I think yeah, I would feel out the, the the group, right? Then then you feel out the group and so and and feel like okay, so do they really care about the fact that they caught the guy that was poisoning the river? Mm-hmm. But it turns out that there's something like why was he poisoning the river? Then like, it becomes a completely different mystery, and I think that's a good way to make a a campaign long mystery uh, scenario without actually um or with giving the the players like the benefit of, of finding out the solution in a couple of sessions or whatever yeah. if that makes sense and you can even have uh poisoning the river introduce you to the main campaign mm-hmm. yeah like they find out who's poisoning the river he was the lieutenant of some big bad guy who's poisoning all the rivers so now we got to go after the big bad guy instead yeah. of going to every town and doing a mystery to figure out who's poisoning the rivers you already found it out mm-hmm. then that leads you on this quest to Stop this big bad guy from poisoning all the rivers and killing all the peoples. Who's a vampire? We've never had a campaign with vampires. I want to have more vampires in my campaign. We did, though. Yeah, but they were barely in there. <coughs> right. We need, we need vampire campaigns. We need more vampires. Have you guys ever played Curse of Strahd? I, I have the book. Hey. But I did not, I've never played Are it. Are there mysteries in there or no? Never read it. Hmm. Couldn't tell you. Probably. It's kind of horror games and mystery games kind of go hand in hand. Oh, I yeah, think. definitely. Um, so, because you're kind of like finding things out and there's horrific things. Especially if you, like you said, if you want the combats to be something you want to try to avoid, mm-hmm. then you kind of got to make the enemies horrific and like super powerful and like mm-hmm. stuff you do not want to mess with. That made me, that makes me think of a campaign that the Sound Alchemist ran once. And it, I would categorize it as like a horror camp or at least a horror session. We were actually in the, in hell. We were in hell. Yep. And I think more questions were raised during that session than any other session that I've ever played. Where, like, there was skeletal snake things, and I was wondering what the rest of the world looked like. Like, you did a really good job of building the world, and it left a lot of questions. So I guess when you're building a mystery uh, story arc, how much how much ambiguity do you create like when how do you because i think you don't want to make another mystery come out of the main mystery cause yeah then that kind of derails the the overall consensus of your main campaign but there's a benefit to it too because I, to this day i still think of that session um and i think there is a benefit like let's say you are going into a village um to find out like why the villagers are going missing and then through you trying to discover the clues as to the whereabouts of the missing uh, villagers, you also find out that like this one family is like slightly off. And then you find out like people like what what's wrong with them? They're not connected to the grander yeah. mystery, mm-hmm. but what's what's up with that weird gene stealer cult fucking family? Mm-hmm. It just it kind of makes it makes your world a bigger place. Like yeah. it, there's other things going on other than just this one mystery. There's other secrets that this place has that that you don't really that don't pertain to what you're doing. Yeah. Should you limit the amount of uh, ambiguity that you have though? Well, I, for one, like you said, it does help world build and kind of set the setting for the characters. Mm-hmm. But I think yeah, you can go overboard. How? What? What would you say is like the best? Like, what's the sweet spot for like character or world building? Um, this is just like a sessions in general. It doesn't necessarily have to be mystery, but like, mm-hmm. what's the sweet spot of like dropping clues or potential hooks? I think enough description where you can make the characters feel like they're actually in a world, but without actually just listing things. Like, oh, this is my world, and there's mountains over here, and there's a temple over here. This guy was betrayed by this one. This is why they're in power. When you just start listing things, it's like, okay, yeah, I don't care. But when it comes out naturally, that's when it's more of an investment. And I think in the context of a mystery campaign, you shouldn't do it too much because it might distract from right. what they're, what the mystery is. Uh, like if they find out there's something <clears throat> off in the family, it's really cool to do in a different kind of campaign. But in a mystery, you kind of want the spotlight to be on the mystery. Mm-hmm. And you don't want them to be... If you want this, the story to be two or three sessions, if they completely go off on this other mystery of who, what's wrong with this family, it might extend it by like another five sessions you have no idea and then you got to plan for that instead of what you were originally planning to do when you guys are building a mystery uh, campaign what's the 
what's the ambiance that you want to create? Because that's something that I think we've never really talked about in any of the podcasts, but mm-hmm. it's very important and something that like good DMs do. Um, I think kind well, of mood. Yeah, the mood setting. Because that's what I was thinking about when you ran your session, Sound Alchemist. When you ran the when we were in hell, there was definitely a mood. It was like a mood of like everything I touch might kill me. Yeah, very dangerous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like, how do you guys build that in a mystery setting? Uh, one of the things that really helps is the music you have or lack thereof or if like you're fighting a grand battle you have the music blaring like it's very it pumps you up but then if you're like at a very unknown place or maybe something really important is happening and you shut off the music and it's like okay this i have to really pay attention to i think the mood also depends on what kind of mystery and the severity of the mystery Mm -hmm. so like i said i think horror goes hand in hand if you want it to be like a murder mystery or something like that but it can also be as simple as like who's stealing the food from the pantry or whatever. Or who's stealing yeah, stuff like that. Maybe maybe this, this village has not not had a good crop this year. They don't have a lot of food, but somebody's stealing it and it's like the orphans that live out in the woods. It doesn't necessarily have to be like a horror. It could be like a little more lighthearted and stuff like that. So the mood can be more But then it's jovial. like oh, they're orphans, like they should keep the food. Yeah, that's and that's the whole <laughs> moral mm-hmm. thing Conundrum adds into thing, it. Yeah. yeah. But it, or or is it can also be the townsfolk getting ripped apart and like skinned alive and yeah. it can be really awful and horrible. Um it just depends on what mood like there's there's a, there's a wide spectrum of moods that you could play around with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it could be more creepy, which is what I would do because I love it. Um, but yeah. it can also be jovial and kind of lighthearted, and jovial. it doesn't have to be this like super dark thing. Yeah, because I mean, even though Scooby Doo is like, yeah, yeah, it's 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 lighthearted, it's creepy, but it's yeah. like, yeah, it's lighthearted, creepy. Yeah, it's for kids. But yeah, creepy. I think there is like a, um, like you should take. Uh, a lot of cues from different um, horror movies and like uh, suspense movies Mm -hmm. um, and really implement them into your uh, campaign there recently there I I don't know what this movie is I think it's like um, um, it's about a a maid who is like super religious and what she does is she puts um, nails in the bottom of her soles and then she wears them as like penance to feel the pain of God or whatever. Mm-hmm. So she's walking around and she her feet are bloody. Think about that. That's how creature. I don't want to. <laughs> bloody feet. What? But I think there is, um, when you're building an aesthetic or when you're building an ambiance within the actual um, mystery campaign, um, aside from the music, you kind of also want to throw in some like descriptive. visual descriptive mm-hmm. things. Yeah, yeah. And I think that can also really change things for like, like, for example, let's say you are trying to figure out where the food is going and you're literally just walking down the street and then out of nowhere you see like a family that looks off. Mm -hmm. It's like the way you describe them is completely like on the opposite side of like how the themes and the overall feel of the campaign was going. So now it's like, what are what are we actually dealing with here? Yeah, yeah and NPCs, how they interact is very important because a lot of these, I was thinking about like Texas Chainsaw Massacre and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Everybody seems a little off. Right. Like you can have the whole village. Something's just like, they're real quiet and they just kind of like look at you like all in unison, like all, all creepy. Like there's something going on with the town that you, maybe that's the mystery in itself. Mm-hmm. Why is this town like this? A lot of Call of Cthulhu, or Cthulhu stories are like that. Um like there's a seat, like the whole town is in on it or something like that, mm-hmm. and it's like the, make your NPCs creepy, right? Or not necessarily bad or evil, creepy. but it's like there's they're just not quite yeah. Right. Or like um, what's that one movie with Jim Carrey and like his whole life is like false? The Mask, the Truman Show, Truman Show. There you go. Oh, yeah. We're like never seen it, but I've heard no. It. Yeah, so it's like his whole life, he's in this town that everything looks normal, happy go lucky, and then. He starts noticing little things are like repeating themselves or something seems off and you see like a person all in black come in and like take somebody away. It's like, yeah, well, lights falling from the sky. Yeah. yeah. The walls are like the sky is actually like the ceiling and there's like walls there. So it's like he's watching TV. He sees living in color and he sees himself. <laughs> oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but building an ambience. Yeah, so it's like everything seems normal, and then you flip it on its side. Yeah, or everybody, everything seems strange. Yeah, just from the get go, and you're mm-hmm. just like, why? 
Also, another thing for mystery is it would be really fun to throw in like, um, uh, or, or making the party question themselves and the members of the party mm -hmm. where like, you don't go to the extent that we were talking about earlier, where like an actual character or an actual player character is the person who's murdering these, uh, children, but like you give the, um, possibility that they might be create suspicion mm -hmm. yeah maybe have the the big bad kind of realize that your party is getting a little too close so they try to frame you or something frame yeah. someone in the party mm -hmm. they take something of theirs and leave it on a crime scene or something like that yeah that would be a really good one too also a uh, building props that's something that i i guess it kind of goes along with like horror uh D, &D but like uh using creepy like props to really like get the party or at least a member of the party like kind of on edge like if it was if it was a, uh, the docile creature i would put like prop feet mm -hmm. <laughs> and, if, and if it was gershwin i have little tiny holes all over everything Why'd or if that? it was both of these guys it'd be feet with little tiny holes everywhere gross i would probably destroy it <laughs> and i would laugh while i, I watched him destroy it i would pull out my uh switch blade that i keep in my back pocket because I do that kind of thing. Which side? Which side? <laughs> Left side, back pocket, it's the, right it's side. The, back it's back the pocket. same. It's the same pocket that I used to destroy beaver dams. Ah, <laughs> that pocket, the special beaver dam destroying pocket. But um, yeah, using like physical things, and it, it kind of goes along with something that the docile creature has said in the past, where like you were talking about smells. Yeah. Mm. Like actually having like different smells, but actually having physical objects that disturb the party. Or even like you showed us these cool puzzle boxes that you got. Oh, yeah. Just yeah, using yeah. stuff like that to like say you literally find a box, try to open it, and it has a clue inside or whatever. Yeah. Just have it as the, the campaign continues on, just they're messing with this little box or whatever. And then when they finally get it open, it's like, oh, you get a clue. Yeah. It'd be really cool, just like physical, tangible thing to just mm -hmm. hand your players. and Or even because clues in general, um, have printouts or visual things that say or for example i did a not a whole mystery campaign but a little puzzle where the, was they had words written on the wall so i printed out the words handed to the players so they could like look at it because it was a word puzzle obviously um and they could actually put things together draw on the paper if they wanted to and do whatever they need to do to try to figure out how to overcome the obstacle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the Sound Alchemist actually in the group chat that we have going on, um, he asked, he asked, you asked, like, what are cool puzzles that you can throw out, um, and and using puzzles puzzles in a mystery campaign would be badass. It was weird because then you just sent a picture of Bridget B. So I was like, oh, is that a puzzle? I don't. Know. I, I mean, understand. it's a puzzle in a way where like you don't know how to Not get her away. to do what you want. Yeah, that's fair. Or look away, I guess. <laughs> it's like, are they real? Or are they not? They're definitely not, but <laughs> that's the fun part. Yeah, it's like, when were they not? And that's the mystery. Yeah. Trying to find out her older stuff and her newer stuff and trying to pinpoint the exact date. Yeah, you compare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that it, that does bring up a good point of like character development. And, and we... Cause, in the previous video that we talked, we talked about character development using the uh, alignment, alignment chart. Mm -hmm. It would be really nice to have these one shot mystery campaigns as a way to showcase an NPC's development into a different mm -hmm. thing. So like the NPC did start off the beginning of the campaign as an A cup, but now she's a double D cup. How did that happen? I really don't know cups that well, so I'm guessing double D is a lot. But yeah. I've heard of S, so there's a lot of letters in between. Yeah, I guess, yeah. But yeah, like using Mr. or using this this campaign to build up Bridget B is I I guess what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I'm not I'm not getting it. I think what you're meaning is like <laughs> you can meet an NPC at the beginning of the mystery campaign where like they're the first person that told you, oh, you know, the, the river's been poisoned, like, my family can't survive. Yeah. And then as you progress and start finding clues, um, the more closer you get to solving it, maybe the same NPC comes up to you and he's trying to, like, halt your progression. And then he starts to get more chaotic evil by trying yeah. to actually kill you. Yeah. And but then you find out, like, oh, you know... He's the one that actually poisoned it because he's trying to like blackmail somebody and blah blah blah. I think that goes back to what Gershwin said about tropes and to be careful because 
I feel like if I have the knowledge that I'm going to be entering a mystery campaign, I'm going to suspect literally everyone. everyone. And mystery. there's a lot of movies and stuff like that have done that kind of thing, that the person that asked for help is actually the bad guy. Mm-hmm. So you have to be very careful when you describe things. They're going to suspect everybody. Yeah, yeah. And, and everything. Do it, so you always meet the main person, right? Yeah. yeah. It's like the main person who did it is the first one, and the one you think you did it isn't it. Yeah. Yeah. So why don't they switch it up? It's like the same for every episode. <laughs> well, it's that's for like kids. They have, they have a template, and they, they run with it. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't until Scrappy-Doo that it changed. Yeah. It's like, whoa, one of the main characters was behind it all? ruh <laughs> <laughs> They've been baiting me to do that the whole episode. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just beware of tropes. I don't think you should necessarily avoid tropes fully, because it's they're there and they could help if your characters just aren't getting it. Mm-hmm. But also be aware that your characters are going to suspect everything. They're going to, they're going to, they're a lot smarter than you think they are. So just keep that in mind. Yeah. And don't get discouraged if they don't like the mystery campaign either. Uh, Cause like if you run a session and it's like, Oh, that was a stupid mystery. Like we found, <laughs> we figured it out within one session. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't feel bad. Like just go at it again. Um, or just make your characters feel cool yeah. or good for figuring it out that quick. That's true. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Like have the local constable praise them for their efforts, make them honorary, honorary deputies of the town, and yeah. reward them with their with their quick thinking and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. Maybe give them a BJ under the table or something. Yeah. By who? The main <laughs> villain, Bridger B. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Who else? Um. Yeah, there's a lot of ways you could run a, a mystery campaign. There's another thing that I brought up that I that you guys brought up that it made me think of another question for mystery, but I can't think of it right now. Subscribe to the channel because maybe I'll remember in the future, and then you guys will benefit from it. Um, I really hope, <laughs> I really hope that um, this helps you out. If you guys have any suggestions for any other topics uh, that you guys would like us to discuss, please comment down in the comment section below. If you guys enjoy our content, don't forget to um, subscribe. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess subscribe. We don't have an Instagram or a Facebook or anything Yet. like that. Yeah. Spread the word. Tell your friends. You can, um, I mean, you can still hit us up on all the One Mind Syndicate um, social medias. We're, we're on there, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk to you guys about the indie. But we really need you, you to guys to let us know. Tolerate those 40K simpletons, though. <laughs> and simpletons. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like just let us know, and, and the more love you guys show us by subscribing, liking, and commenting, we'll be able to create more content for you guys. Um, we're not being desperate. We're just please. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys. As always, this is the Sound Alchemist. That's our creature, Gershwan, and we are out of here. <laughs>